limits at infinity for square root function. Here we have two, right? In fact, we have one only, but the limit is approaching plus infinity here and minus infinity there, okay? Now, I hope you remember that when we are trying to explain how to find limit in our video number two, the first one was about limit, right? What is limit? Second, how to find limit. These two are extremely important videos which you should watch. There at the end, we have said, you can always use table of values to check the answer. Well, I would recommend in such kinds of questions, when you have radicals, square roots, then it is a good idea to check the answer. For example, when we say approaching plus thousand, you can plug in, uh, I mean plus infinity, you can plug in values like close to thousand, ten thousand and check your value. In this case, it would be like, you can say minus 100, minus 1000, minus 10,000 and see how does the function approach when we are approaching negative high values, okay? You'll get an idea of the answer, correct? That is very, very important for such questions, right? Sometimes you may have a definite uh, limit, sometimes you may not, correct? So, but that gives you an idea and then it helps to further solve your questions, correct? If you are not able to do it algebraically and if it is not mentioned in the test, then you can always make table of values and get to the answer. You'll get full marks for that also. Don't forget that. Always remember it, okay? Now here is the strategy to do limits of such functions. I'd also recommend to watch my video on what is square root of A equals to, right? So we have square root of A and this square root of a is actually equals to absolute value of a, right? Square root of a is not just a, correct? For example, if I write minus 7 whole square, right? I don't get minus 7. I get minus of minus 7. I get absolute value of minus 7. Do you understand? That's what we mean to say when we write square root of a equals to absolute a. So this is something which we are going to use in all such problems, right? Remember that. Go through this video is worthwhile. Okay, now, to find the limit, what we will do is we will use this concept, okay? So, what we'll do is we'll try to solve like this. X approaches plus infinity. I don't have to write plus, but I'm just writing uh, for the first one, mainly because we have the other one, which is minus, but it's not required. So we have x on the top and what we will do is we'll factor out x square from here. So if you factor out x square, you are left with 1 plus 1 over x square, correct? That's what you get. Now, in this case, we will use our information about this, right? We say x approaches infinity and if I take it out of the square root sign, what should I get? I get a value, not x, absolute value of x. That's, this is very important, okay? It makes huge difference in these two questions and that's the reason why I put them side by side. Okay, so we get 1 plus 1 over x squared. Now, if we are approaching positive infinity, right, then absolute x is positive. Is that okay? So since we are approaching positive infinity, I'm writing x approaches positive infinity, so we know when x, this is how absolute function is defined, right? So absolute function is defined like, what is absolute function? So we say, we'll just use it here. Absolute x is equals to positive x, right? If x is greater than or equal to zero, right? And this negative x, if x is less than zero, right? Since we are going to positive infinity, this will be positive x, correct? That's what I'm trying to say. So this is positive x, so it is positive x over x square root of 1 plus 1 over x square. Now as you can see, we are in a position to cancel out our x's, right? Because these are common, right? They can be cancelled out. You are left with 1 over this. Is that okay? Now, final. When we plug in infinity here for x, so what do we get? So we get 1 over one square root, correct? Because one over x square is zero, is it okay? So we get square root of one plus zero. Because 
if x is very large, right, then this term 1 over x square will be very, very small, as, so we'll say 0, right? And therefore, we get this as 1. Therefore, limit of this function when x approaches infinity is plus 1. Correct? Now, we'll follow the same process here, but the only difference will be at this stage. Correct? At this stage, we are approaching minus infinity. So, when we are approaching minus infinity from the definition, absolute x will be minus x. Correct? And therefore, the result of this will be minus 1. Correct? We can follow the same procedure and then here is a difference and that is a huge difference. So your understanding of absolute value of a is actually square root of a square is of utmost importance here and in such examples. So whenever you're doing square root with squares inside, take care and understand what it is leading to. Okay, I hope you understand and appreciate it. Thank you.